guys, welcome to Lingo Marina. Today we're gonna learn 20 new idioms. And if you forgot what an idiom is, an idiom is a phrase that you can just not translate word to word because it wouldn't make any sense. So the only way you can deal with idioms is learn them. And today I'm gonna explain some idioms to you. We're gonna look at the examples. So hopefully by the end of this video, you will have learned 20 new idioms that you can use when speaking English. Cool. So if you're interested, continue watching this video up to the very end. But before you start, please hit the like button if you enjoy my content and subscribe to this channel if you're learning English. Idiom number one, white elephant. White elephant means a thing that is no longer needed, but it costs a lot of money. For example, this office building is a white elephant because everyone is working from home, but we keep paying the rent. White elephant. The white elephant. The next idiom, white lie. White lie is this small lie that you say because you don't want to hurt someone. Just a little white lie. You lied? I don't know, your mom cooked dinner and uh, you said, I love this dinner, but you actually didn't like it. This is kind of white lie. You didn't want to offend your mom. This is why you lied a little. Little white lie, everyone does it. By the way, the idioms in this video are arranged by color. So if you are writing something down, if you're using different colors, make sure you're highlighting them with different colors because it really helps our brain to remember those idioms. White collar. If you've been following me for quite a while, and uh, if you've been watching my videos where I give advice on what kind of TV shows to watch, you probably know this idiom. The collar is something that you have on your shirt and uh, somebody who's a white collar is an office worker. So you can say, this is a white collar profession. That means most likely you would go to the office every single day wearing a formal shirt, sitting at the office, etc. There are also other word combinations with this idiom. White collar resort, for example, means that people who work in the office mostly come to this resort. I don't know, maybe there is some town in Florida where most of people from New York travel to have vacation. I've heard Fort Lauderdale is one of those towns uh, which is uh, regularly filled by white collars from New York. This would have been some cushy white collar resort. On the other hand, we have blue collar. So compared to white collars, blue collars do more physical work white collars do more mental work. White collar, blue collar. Out of the blue. When something happens out of the blue, it happens unexpectedly. For example, you know, my cousin called me out of the blue. Yeah, out of the blue. Calling someone these days is most often out of the blue because the majority of my calls, for example, are pre-planned. I have a calendar and um, we plan different calls with my company, we plan different calls with my partners. So whenever somebody just calls me, it is always out of the blue. I'm like, why can't you text me? By the way, guys, let me know if you're the same, if you are very surprised whenever somebody calls you. Like, I get super surprised. I'm like, why are you calling me instead of texting? Because, I don't know. Remember there were days, like 20 years ago, we would always have this phone ringing. My classmates would call me, my friends would call me, we would chat on the phone. These days, nobody calls no one, everyone is texting. So whenever I get a call from someone, I can say he called me out of the blue. I didn't expect his call. That was so out of the blue. Once in a blue moon. When something happens once in a blue moon, that means it happens really rarely. Once in a blue moon. They come to visit us once in a blue moon. That means maybe they visit us like once in five years, once in 10 years. Very, very rare occasion. And he said that only once in a blue moon does a dog's ear grow back. Sometimes you can say, I feel sad. But the more elegant way to say it is to say, I have the blues. I've had the blues. I have the blues generally means that you're melancholic and sad. I feel the blues every single day right now uh, because it's winter and it's getting dark really early and I just feel that it's kind of pressing on top of me. I don't know if you guys feel the same, but these are my feelings when I'm in the winter climate. I have the blues. Blue blood. This is something that can be translated in my language and my original language is Russian. We definitely have this blue blood. When somebody has blue blood or from a blue blood family, means that he or she is royal or from a noble family. 
it is often used in a negative way. We want to say something like, oh, of course the senator is a blue blood. He cannot understand real people's problems because he's so, you know, upscale or whatever. He doesn't understand us. Blue blood running through my veins. Now, I want to let you guess the meaning of this idiom. To paint the town red. And let me give you an example. After our exam, we decided to get all dressed up and paint the town red. What do you do after an exam? You go to every single bar, you go to every single restaurant and you enjoy life. This is what it means. To paint the town red means to go to a lot of different bars and restaurants. Oh, we're gonna paint the town red tonight. I think it's coming from the older days when we had a map and we would mark. I would do that. I would mark with like a pencil or a pen the places that I visited. Uh, and this is basically painting the whole map with uh, one color. And if it's red, then, you know, I painted the town red. I've been to all of those places. Red tape. Red tape means a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of rules, a lot of documents that you have to get in order to do something. Like starting a company in this country or whatever country, I don't mean any specific country, but you can say, in order to start the company in this country, we must cut through the red tape. This is crazy how many restrictions they have for entrepreneurs. Red tape means a lot of rules, bureaucracy, etc. That's what makes us special. No more red tape. To roll out the red carpet, when you roll out the red carpet, you give someone a special treatment. My friend rolled out the red carpet for me when I came to visit her. That means she decorated her house, gave me the best room, prepared the best dinner, rolled out the red carpet. Oh, yes, well, let's roll out the red carpet. Red herring. You know what a herring is, right? It's this fish. Red herring is something weird. Actually, it's a funny phrase that denotes a fact or idea that takes away attention from the main problem. For example, the police was investigated in this case and they had a lot of clues, but all of them turned out to be red herrings. That means that those clues didn't lead to actually solving the case. They were just, you know, random facts that didn't have any specific meaning. Red herring. They were a red herring, thank you. Catch somebody red-handed. When someone is caught red-handed, that means he was caught doing something illegal. Catch him red-handed. He was caught red-handed taking money from my desk. That means I spotted him stealing my money. A silver spoon in one's mouth. To have a silver spoon in one's mouth means to be born in a rich family, it means you had no trouble growing up, everything was given to you a lot of money, a lot of privilege. Poor little rich boy, choking on that silver spoon. And again, just like blue blood, this idiom is very often used in a negative way. What does he know about hardship? He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, which means he doesn't understand us. He doesn't understand our problems. A golden opportunity. A golden opportunity is an outstanding chance to do something. Oh my God, starting an online company in 2020 was a golden opportunity. Or I'd better phrase it, starting an online conference company was a golden opportunity in 2020. And if you had it, your company has probably grown by a lot. You've got a golden opportunity here. <laughs> golden parachute. This is an idiom that again exists in many languages. And uh, this is when a top manager is asked to leave a company, he gets a huge compensation. Like sometimes you hear that a CEO steps down from a company, the company was making losses and still the CEO is paid billions of dollars, millions, okay, millions of dollars. This is called golden parachute. And a lot of uh, shareholders aren't normally happy about that. A lot of workers would say, why did this person bring our company to bankruptcy or whatever, but they still got those golden parachutes. And a lot of examples of golden parachutes are mentioned in uh, documentaries about the 2008 crisis. And I was recently watching one on Netflix and they were talking about how CEOs and top managers from banks that went bankrupt got golden parachutes. They got millions of dollars because they were asked to leave their job, which might sound a little weird. Hey, and you are my golden parachute. Green with envy. When you're green with envy, that means you're really, really jealous. I don't know, that girl got my favorite dress and it was the only one in the store and they're sold out across the country and I'm green with envy that she got it. They'll be green with envy. Green light. 
you got a green light from me to have rest today, to take this evening off and uh, watch a documentary or watch a movie. Green light means you get my permission. You get my permission to do nothing this evening. Have you cleared it with Nashville? We've got the green light. Gray area is a subject that is not really clear and you can't really define. Like, I don't know, when you're dealing with taxes or when you're dealing with legal documents and you're asking your lawyer, what I do here? And the lawyer says, you see, this is a gray area. We don't know exactly. There aren't enough rules regarding this subject. This is a gray area. We don't really understand. I see, that's where you and I are different. I just suck at the whole gray area thing. And the last but not the least, again, I'm pretty sure most of you guys' languages have this word, uh, have this idiom. It's called black sheep. Black sheep means you're different from everyone. Normally we have white sheep and then there will be black sheep and you know, we'll be talking about how different it is and it stands out. So the black sheep returns. Sometimes it's used in a negative way, like the whole class is behaving well, but Nathan is black sheep. He's often misbehaving, running around and playing during classes. He's a black sheep. He was the black sheep. That was it for me for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, hit the red subscribe button down below. If you haven't yet attended any of Lingua Trips online classes, the links to our best-selling courses will be below. They are good for different levels of English and they're good for different goals that you might have. Maybe you want to take an exam. Maybe you want to start sounding like an American or maybe you just want to brush up your grammar. There are different courses down below. Check them out. I teach in some of them, but I'm not a professional teacher. So I would normally teach with somebody who is an accredited teacher and we have a team who works on schedules and works on the content. And thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. I'll see you very soon uh, during my classes and during my next videos. Bye-bye.